So today we'll start with structural formulas, and I like this slide because it pretty much shows you all the different formulas that we use. So a structural formula, which is this one down here, only uses the letter or the symbols and then the bonds in between them. It does not have the extra valence electrons with it. So a structural formula will not have any dots. A Lewis structure has the valence electrons on it. I like to use this one more because it shows all the electrons. However, in a hurry, I'll draw this. Molecular formula means you're just giving me the formula. You're writing out the formula, not drawing anything. And then these two are something that you'll use more on a computer. Space filling, I don't have anything in my classroom to use for that other than on the computer. Uh, ball and stick molecular model, that kind of shows what I have in my room when you start actually building models and putting them together. So when we draw Lewis structures, these are the steps. So you're going to predict the location of certain formulas. So for example, if I have uh, CF2, the atom that has the least attraction will be the central atom and that is typically the one that's further to the left. So if I look at carbon and fluorine, carbon is in group 4, fluorine is in group 7 or 17. Carbon is further to the left, carbon is going to be a central atom. Carbon 99% of the time is a central atom. But if I don't know whichever one is further to the left other than hydrogen, Hydrogen is the furthest to the left, but because it can only bond with one thing, it's going to be what we call terminal. So it's going to be at the end. So if I had CH2, uh, my carbon would be my center, my H would be a terminal, and my H would be a terminal. My hydrogen will never be a central atom. Um, determine the number of electrons available for bonding, and when we get to the practice problems, I'll point this out better. Determine how many bonding pairs, so once I find the electrons, I'm going to divide by two, because that will tell me how many pairs there are. Then I'm going to start placing bonding pairs, and I'm always going to start by drawing bonds from my central atom. So if I had CF2, I'm going to draw my C, and the first thing I'm going to do is connect it to my atoms that surround it. I'm going to figure out how much I have left, and then I'm going to determine whether the octet rule has been fulfilled or not. So these are the steps. I'm going to kind of skip the practice problems for now, but when we get to the practice problems, I'm going to go through that step by step to show you how those work. And in your notes, you have three or four practice problems that you can go back and look at. Um, there will be, we will do the same thing is with... Is Ray Tucker in there? Is who? Ray? Yes. Okay, Ray, she forgot to sign back in. I was just making sure you were back. <laughs> okay, so Adam's that are polyatomic, so on your cheat sheet, like PO4, OH, they are covalently bonded, so we can also draw Lewis structures for them. The only thing is, you're going to look for that positive or negative charge. If I have PO4, negative 3 charge, what does that negative 3 tell you? If an ion has a negative 3 charge, what does that tell you? The other one has to even it out. Huh? So how does it even out? If it has a negative 3 charge, what's going to happen to this? Say that again. The other one has to be positive. 
What does a negative charge mean? You're gaining electrons. So if I have a negative three charge, that means you're gaining three electrons. You're going to have three extra electrons because it has a negative three charge. And we'll do examples with that. So if you're looking at something that is an ion and has a plus or minus charge, you'll need to figure that part out. So here's your examples. Like I said, I'm not going to do those right now. They're in your notes. You can look at them. I'm going to do those separately. But I want to skip to vocab word. Resonance structure. Resonance is a condition that occurs when there's more than one Lewis structure you can draw. If you're going to have a resonance structure, you're probably going to have a multiple bond in it. So a double bond or a triple bond. So if I look at nitrate, I'm going to have three points where it has bonds. My double bond can go here, so that's structure one. My double bond can go here, that's structure two. Or the double bond can go up there. That's structure three. NO3 is a resonance structure. It does not matter where I put that double bond. It all works out the same. So it means that I'm going to have the same formula. I'm going to have the same charge. But that double bond can be moved to a different spot and it's not going to change anything. So a resonance structure typically has a double or triple bond, and it just means that that triple bond or double bond can occur in different areas. And that will not change anything else about the structure. So resonance, more than one structure, involves multiple bonds. So here, Typically, I will ask you, you know, draw the three resonance structures. In your book, if you see something that looks like this, those dashed lines mean that the double bond could go here, it could go here, or it could go there. So that's what those dashed lines mean. The molecule still is going to behave just the same no matter what, and the bond lengths are going to be identical. They're just going to switch where that double bond is located. Exceptions. And these are not in your vocab, but I want you to know the difference between an incomplete octet, um, a sub-octet, and an expanded octet. So some molecules don't obey the octet rule. An example here would be my NO2. NO2 has five valence electrons from nitrogen, and it has 12 from oxygen, and there's no way that I can put this together and get two, four, six. So my nitrogen only has seven valence electrons. It does not have eight. Oxygen, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, but my nitrogen is incomplete. It does not actually have eight electrons. And that does happen once in a while. Typically, I will let you know and I'll say, you know, what is the expanded octet or what is uh, the structure for this one? So another example of how to fix this once in a while, a few compounds can become stable with less than eight. So there's that, I said it's not a vocab word, but really it probably should be. Suboctet means less than eight. So sometimes what'll happen here, boron can only bond with three things. And I can have BH3. So that is a viable molecule. Boron would only have six um, valence electrons in that case. It is going to combine with nitrogen. 
So what happens in a coordinate bond is one molecule is going to take care of the other one. So this nitrogen had two valence electrons. It's going to donate both of those to make that bond right there. So instead of one coming from nitrogen and one coming from boron, they are both coming from nitrogen. So a coordinate bond means that one atom is going to donate both, and the other one's not going to donate any. And that happens a fair amount of the time. And then the other one, an expanded octet, typically happens with d orbitals. So this is going to happen. Um, in a d orbital situation. So what happens with expanded octet is you're going to have extra. Expanded means more. Elements in period 3 are higher. So period means row 3. We're not looking at groups right now. Period 3 or higher can have a d orbital and that way it can expand. So if I have phosphorus and I add chlorine to it, and basically this is what I want to look at. This would be PCl5. So here, phosphorus in the middle has how many shared electrons? Mm -hmm. Ten. So it has above eight. Phosphorus, that happens with Sulfur, that happens with a fair amount of times. So expanded octet means that you have extras, not less than. Sub means less than. And I'm not going to do that yet. And I'm not going to do that. And there's your review. So there is section three. You'll want to practice, do all the practice problems for that.